All right. We're in section P2, still talking about exponents. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the ideas needed to get through the homework in this section. Now, some of the ideas you'll use most frequently are just called the, known as the laws of exponents. And these are as follows. If we have a to the x times a to the y, that's the same thing as a to the x plus y. Because if we're in a system that counts by a's, and we take x steps, then we multiply in that same system by y more steps. Multiplication is what it needs, exponents need, to go from one step to the next. So this is taking x steps in this system, then taking y steps in the same system. So that's just the same thing as doing one set of steps rather than two sets and just going x plus y steps in this system. This is what's known as the product rule. So say if we had, you know, we were counting by fives, we did two steps and then we did four steps, well, that's the same thing as taking six steps in the same system, the system that counts by factors of five. Now remember back in the motivation video, which is where all these kind of ideas easily come from, that dividing was when we were moving to the left. Multiplying was when we were moving to the right. So doing x steps and then dividing the result by counting y steps is just saying go x steps to the right and then y steps to the left, or x minus y steps. This is what's called the quotient rule. Now, this is a little bit trickier to connect with the motivation video. But it turns out that taking an exponent to another exponent just involves multiplying these two exponents together. The book calls this the power rule. And if you think about it, and go back to the motivation video, you can derive why this makes sense. Now there are a few more. And in this case, we're kind of mixing systems. Remember that going from one step to the next in with exponents involved multiplication. So when you're taking the exponent of a product where you're multiplying two things together, it makes sense that exponents are going to play well, you know, kind of distribute, if you will, over multiplication. And the same thing goes for division as well. And the book calls this the power of a product and the power of a quotient. Now, there are a few other things to cover.
regardless of what system you're in, if you don't take any steps, you're right where you started. And if you remember, we were always starting, starting at the step 1, whose value was 1. The zeroth step had value 1. So that's why we have this rule. This, a to the minus x, getting a bit out of order here, but that's all right, a to the minus x, just go back to the quotient rule here. That's like having 0 in the first place, and for y in the second place, having x. So this is just a to the 0, or 1, divided by a to the x. So this is what I was talking about in the previous video, that if you have a negative exponent, what you do is you just end up dropping that exponent, dropping this whole thing into the denominator and changing the sign of the exponent. And what I should have put before here, that if you take one step in any system, you just land on what you're counting by. You know, starting at the zeroth step, you're at 1. To get to the next step, you'd have to multiply 1 by a to get the value at step 1. And so the value is a. Now, the book separates out laws of exponents and laws of radicals, but there's really no need to. Because radicals, as we saw in the motivation video, Radicals are just exponents with fractions in them. So all the laws of exponents apply to radicals. That if you have you know, a radical times a radical, that's the radical of the sum of these two fractions. A radical divided by a radical that's, divide, that's subtracting the two fractions here and here. And same thing with the power rule and so forth and so on. So there's no real need to memorize a whole other set of rules. Just convert radicals into exponents and you've reduced your number of rules that you have to memorize in half. And one more bit, and that's that if you don't see a number outside this radical here, there's no number here, it's assumed to be 2 because square roots are common enough and we are lazy enough to just leave that off. So whenever you have you know, just something like square root of 5, you can think of that as 5. Now with if I need an exponent, like I do here, I can use this rule, because 5 is the same thing as 5 to the first. And now I can write this as 5 to the 1 half power. So that's just converting from a square root to the fractional exponent. Now, uh, in the next video, we'll talk about um, the ideas you'll need uh, where we have to extend our notion of like terms to incorporate exponents.